everybody. It's Diana here at Heartfelt Creative. How are you all today? I hope everyone's doing well. It's cool here today in the greater Chicagoland area of Illinois, but it's really sunny and beautiful. You can tell by the sun coming through my windows. Um, it's a Sunday afternoon, and I thought that I would share with you a little video on a new little item that I put together to go with my grab and go tote. So if, if you haven't seen the video for this or haven't made it and you're interested, here on my YouTube channel, you'll see a video called Grab and Go Tote, and that's this product right here. It was originally created, if you are a machine embroiderer and you use, or sewer even, and you use Kimberbell products, um, and you use their orange pop rulers, this was made to hold the orange pop rulers, aside for the square rulers, aside for the rectangular rulers. Um, but it can also be used for any other kind of sewing or quilting rulers and templates and patterns and that sort of thing that you might have. So take a look at that video if you like, um, because this is really a handy product, especially if you have a limited area to keep your sewing and quilting things and then, and embroidery things, and you need to stay organized, then this is nice because you can just do this and hang it on the back of a door or pop it over a hanger and hang it in a closet. So it doesn't take much space, but it will hold a lot. But you can see that in the other video. But the, the one thing this doesn't have is a true place for your embroidery USB sticks and your little snips, things like that, right? So I've been wanting to put this little thing today together for a while now. And I thought, well, it's a Sunday. And although I still have a couple of Christmas presents to finish, we just finished Hanukkah. Now I'm finishing up Christmas presents. I thought I would do this video today. And that way, um, if any of you want something to do over the holiday, you've got a little project. Or if you want to make one of these and give it as a gift over the holidays, you'll have it in time to get it done because truly it won't take you even an hour probably um, to get it done once you've seen all of this and here in the YouTube um, description there is a link for a page an info page that tells you the um, the products or the the items the supplies and all that you're going to need the pattern everything is completely free there's no charge coming from me but i just thought a lot of people although i don't do a lot of written patterns for these types of videos people still like an information sheet to tell you what you need to have product wise and and supply wise so um, you can check that link out here in the description also, if you like the video, please hit like on this video. I appreciate that so much. It's my pleasure to do these and, and put them out for you all. And um, if you want to see more videos like this and be notified when they come out, just hit the little subscribe button and then hit the little bell for notifications. And whenever I put out a new video, you'll get notified. Kind of slick, right? <laughs> so, okay. So today, the little project that we're going to make, you all have seen, I'm sure, these little kind of tool tidies, I call them, right? They're little rolls. You can put your um, rotary cutter and your scissors and, you know, small rulers and pencils, things like that in here. Roll it up, tie it, away you go, right? So I thought, what if we did something similar, but we made it for machine embroiderers who have a ton of USB sticks? Now, I think that if you're new to machine embroidery, you might have one or two USB sticks. Trust me when I tell you that if you like machine embroidery and keep going with it, you're gonna end up with lots of USB sticks because that's what we hold all of our files and stuff on. That We also use it as like our long-term storage in a lot of cases. Like I store stuff on my hard drive and in the cloud, but I also store it on a USB stick in case I ever need it or wanna take it with me to a class or an event or something. And eventually we'll get back to doing those live in-person type events. So this will come in handy. So this is what it is. Now, if you don't do embroidery at all and you're like, oh, well, then this isn't for me. 
you can still use this. Say you're somebody who still uses a lot of USB sticks for work or for other, there might be other hobbies and crafts and stuff that use them that I'm not aware of. So I say it's for machine embroiderers, but I'm pretty sure anybody could find a use for this. So like, okay, I'm just gonna say one thing that has nothing to do with sewing. If you have a friend like myself and my best friend, Laurie, we are lipstick fanatics. And I don't mean that facetiously, I mean that honestly. She and I probably have every color lipstick and every brand of lipstick ever made on this planet, um, and a lot. And so when we go places, we always take tubes and tubes. This would work for that. Um, so Laurie, you might get one of these for Christmas. You never know. <laughs> anyway, so, but for machine embroidery, I thought this would be great for um, carrying your USB sticks, your little snips, maybe your paper tape, all that kind of stuff. Now, let me just say this um, before we get started. No product that I mentioned by name today is supporting me in this endeavor at all, okay? These are just things that I use and I like, so I talk about them um, so that you have an idea of the type of thing that you can use with it, but it's not made specifically for any brand or anything like that, okay? All righty. So, um, like your standard tool tidy, you've got ties, right? But on the inside, there's a zipper, oops, and snaps, and you have pockets all along the top here, specifically for your USB sticks. So you can get at least eight, eight or 10 across the top here, and you can get even more down here in this zippered section. And um, when I flip the camera over here in a minute, I will show you the different sizes because that's one thing people are always like, well, USB sticks come in different sizes. How do I know? Well, I've made these kind of a standard size, but you can adjust this a lot. So if you use USB sticks like this, you can adjust all your pockets to fit this USB stick. However, if you're like me, I use this type of USB stick and this type of USB stick and this type of USB stick. And yes, there are more. I use this type of USB stick. So there are tons of sizes. The little pockets up along here are made to fit base, these three kind of basic sizes. And in the pocket down here, along with snips and things, I can keep my really odd size. Say you have a cute little USB stick that is a figural shape, like a sewing machine or a pair of scissors or something like that. I've seen some cute ones out there like that. Um, those fit really great down here in this pocket. So you can use this for storage, you know, long-term in your sewing area and nice way to keep organized. And then when we get back to going to events and things, you can use this to take things with you to those events, your USB sticks. Because I always take an empty one for any new files I might get. I always take a couple of them that are filled with other patterns in case, you know, I want to change up something that I'm doing while I'm there. I have all of that with me. This works great for it. All righty. So um, like I said, there's going to be a little, uh, there's a little link down in the description to tell you what you need, but I'll go through that with you really quickly. You're gonna need a 15 inch zipper, 15 inch zipper. You don't want anything that's any, um, oh, the fabric's warm. It was sitting right on top of my iron. Um, you don't want anything smaller than 15 inches. You're gonna have a little bit of waste on the ends, but not very much, okay? Um, you're gonna want two 20 inch pieces of coordinating ribbon for your outside ties. And then, we could have made this where we take our fabric and we put it all together in a quilt sandwich and we quilt it and make it really beautiful. But when I made the grab and go tote and when I made this, I thought I want this to be super utilitarian. 
I don't want to put in a lot of time doing a really beautiful piece of quilting when I just want it done, made, and, and start using it. So I used a placemat. This is a placemat I'm going to use today. And I used a placemat. Whoops, upside down. I used a placemat for this one as well. You, at, what I like about these placemats, and they're only a couple dollars, like at your general type store. Like here in the US, I got these at Walmart. Um, I think you probably get them here in the US too, places like Meyer or any place that sells home decor items, kitchen linens, that kind of things you can get. You may already have a, a placemat in your linen cabinet or your linen drawer that is a one-off. So like when I put placemats on my table, during the holidays, everything is kind of like beautifully matched up. But throughout the year, I actually like to do like a different place setting at each one. So I'll do a different set of linen at each place. And I have lots of one-off placemats because instead of buying four or six or eight of them for a whole grouping, which I have like a few sets of those, I have a lot of singles that I mix and match. So you may have a one-off. And then I use my one-offs also to like put a vase on in the middle of the table or something like that. So you may have one already and you can just go grab it and you're off. This one is kind of like pre-quilted fabric, but instead of a batting, the way it feels to me is there's there's a little bit of lightweight foam batting in here. And I like it because it keeps everything nice and padded. Now I know our USB sticks have a cover and all that, but I still like all that type of thing to have a little more padding on it when I take it places and store it. So that's, I like these, I like this placemat type for that reason. And mine has, um, um, a scalloped edging all the way around. That's not a problem. It can also be a straight edge if that's what you prefer. That's not a problem either. So you can see in this tool tidy that I made, this had straight sides on it. Okay, but um, if you have a scalloped edge, that's fine. So you're going to need these items. And then you'll also need things like um they call them poppers um i have always called them just called them plastic snaps but people call them poppers um in order to snap this close now if you don't have these don't run out and get them you don't have to put these on this product or on this project but they're these little white it's kind of oops kind of hard to see let me pull one out that's colored and then there you can see that red one a little better they're plastic, people use them on children's clothing and things like that. Um, so if you have some of these around, if you already use them, you can use them on this. But if you don't, you don't have to run out and get all of the stuff that you need to use those. If you have regular snaps, even snow on, so on snaps, you could use that or no snaps at all. You really don't have to have snaps. Um, I just put them on to give them a little bit more secure the tea from falling out, but they're fine. It'll be fine without it. Like I don't have any snaps on this one. Okay. That's kind of up to you. Other than that, oh, you might want an old rotary cutter handle with an old blade. I keep one around. I open boxes with it. I cut paper with it. And I cut my I cut my zippers with it too. Because even though these teeth are nylon and they you can sew over them pretty easy. I don't like to use my really good rotary cutter blade on them because I still don't want them to. I still think it can dent that blade just a little bit. So this blade is so old and nasty on this one. There's glue on here. It's just gross. And I can, hey, I can visually see marks on the edge of this blade. If I looked at it under a microscope, it would probably scare me to death. So something like that is handy for this. If you ever use a zipper tape for putting a zipper on that can be helpful for putting your zipper on it's not necessary but if you're new to putting zippers on it can be helpful or if you just want to make sure it's all nice in one place and not going anywhere that can help 
I used it because we're not putting a zipper on an edge where you don't really need something like that. It's kind of just floating out here on this piece of fabric. So you wanna kind of make sure it can stay in one spot. All righty. And then of course your sewing machine in good working order, all, all of that kind of thing. Um, I'm just using a regular, I'm using Aurifil thread. That's just my thread of choice. You can use any thread you like. Um, it doesn't matter really too much with this project. It's not like making a quilt where you want things to kind of your better quality threads. Um, I'm using an 8012 uh, standard Microtex needle if you're interested in knowing what that is. Okay, that you know what I'm using there. And then I just have my snips. I have a heat erasable pen. I have my standard, whoops, <laughs> I have my standard ruler and I have a few uh, quilting clips. And that's really all you're gonna need, okay? If you're like me, you might need clip on magnifiers because I have to do it to see them. So that's what we need. And now I'm gonna flip the camera so that you can see, I can show you this in a little more detail and we're gonna start sewing it. All right, here we go. Let's flip the camera. All righty. So I knocked this one too, let me, there, that wasn't too bad. So when I showed it to you, it was all put together nicely. Your ribbon just comes around and then you tie it here on the edge, right? So my ribbons, when I open it up, mine came unsnapped. Sorry. All right, so you've got two snaps right here. And that just kind of helps keep this flap down and cover. Uh, this flap is to cover this piece here that holds your USB sticks. And then here's our zipper. You unzip, you have, you can keep your other USB sticks, your tiny snips, anything you like in there. And like I said, this is really utilitarian. There's not anything fancy going on with this. So you'll, you might want to have one of your favorite USB sticks. Like if you, I use, I use this type mainly just because I buy them in bulk because I have them so many. And then I have a few that are like this that have had things come pre-loaded. And then I have some blanks like this that I bought too, because I think they're, I'll be honest, I only bought them because I think they're pretty. Because <laughs> usually I use that type. And that's just another one I use. It's got a bigger storage drive on it that I use to hold files and stuff, not embroidery files, like printed files and things. So, that's how this works. And I just kind of pulled my corners back and sewed them so that the flap has a little bit of a look to it. There's nothing ultimately fancy about this. That's a fun little make and it's very utilitarian. All right, so if you have a couple of your little USB sticks handy, um, that might help when we go to making the USB pockets. So the first thing we want is our placemat. See if I can get this out any further so you can see the full placemat. Uh, looks like about as good as this is gonna do. Okay. So this is 18 and like a third inch or something by about 13 this way. So 13 uh, vertical, 18 horizontal, okay? Um, choose whatever side you want to be the outside and put that on the bottom. So facing down and then whatever you want on the inside will be facing up. So you want to take off any tags that are on here. Like, you know, you usually get a little paper tag or something on the edges, just cut that out and get rid of it. Okay. Alrighty, so what you want to do is take up here at your top edge. So if you use a scalloped placemat like I have, just look at where the peak is because you want to measure from the peak, okay? If it's straight across, just anywhere along there. So 
set your ruler right at that peak, if you have a scallop or at your top edge, if you don't, and go down one, two, three, four inches and make yourself a little line there with your heat erasable pen or pencil or chalk. Um, chalk won't show up here on mine because it's mostly white on this side. So, and then come over to your other side and again, go down four and make yourself a mark. And that just is going to tell you where your um, flap is going to come over from. Okay? And I like to do that and just kind of do that to it. And then it starts to fold on its own nice and easy. Okay. And then you want to come down to the bottom and you want to bring your piece up so that your, if you have a scallop, your, your peak here touches that bottom edge. And then you want to crease it. Because this is going to end up making your pockets and your bigger pocket this way. So you just kind of want to generally know where that's at. Now, at this point, we want to take our zipper. I always put my zipper on the left side because I'm left-handed and I pull with my right hand. If you pull with your left hand, then flip it around so that the zipper pull is over here. It, for me, it's just a handedness thing. So I always put mine on the left side. Completely up to you. Now, if you're finding that you're having a hard time keeping your placemat, on your marks where they're staying nice and nice and firm. Just get yourself your fold and then put a wonder clip just on each end and that will hold it in place for you so that, cause sometimes this wants to scoot up and around a little bit, that'll keep it nice and steady. So the next thing we need to do, we have our zipper and we're gonna be placing it, but then we need to take, I would suggest if you use multiple sizes of USB sticks that you get your largest one. So if I laid this here on this peak and I just made my line right down each side, once I sew those two lines in, this will never fit in there. You need to make it what looks like significantly larger. So what I did on mine, just so that I could fit any size USB stick in at all, is I took my, my ruler and my heat erasable pen, and I started going across every inch and a half and making a tick mark then moving my ruler inch and a half and making a tick mark. That way, any of the USB sticks that I use are going to fit in those pockets and I'm going to be able to get them out without too much difficulty. So I'm just marking mine every inch and a half across. I'm using the mark to mark the next one as the edge to mark the next one. And that ends up giving you, I think about, I don't know, eight, maybe a few more than that. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, it ends up giving you about eight pockets there if you use an inch and a half. And so instead of using one of yours to actually do a measurement widthwise, just give yourself an inch and a half all the way across. Now, here's where I do use my biggest stick. So here you can see I have three different USB sticks. Well, this is obviously my longest one. So I'm going to use it, not from a peak, but from a, a dip on my scallop. Now, if you're straight across here, just use it from the edge. But since I have scallops, I'm gonna use it right at the dip and I'm gonna come down and make a mark right here. 
right there. That way, when I go to put this in, this in the pocket, this will be tall enough. Now over here, obviously it's gonna be a little taller, that's fine. What, will, what I'll probably do is these longer ones will go in these slightly longer pockets and these will go in the ones that I do there. So my finger can just reach in there a little bit and pull it out and it keeps it secure. So what I'm going to do now that I have that mark there is I'm going to line up my ruler. I'm gonna take another dip point and make sure, yep, I'm good there. Yep, I'm good there. So I'm pretty much at a good, and I'm just gonna do with a heat erasable pen or a chalk pencil or a regular pencil, whatever you like, I'm gonna make a line right there because that's going to be the bottom of my pockets. Now that I know where all of that is going to be lined up, I can put in my zipper because you want to technically put in your zipper first. So we can take our clips out and we can unfold our placemat because we only want to work with the one thickness at the moment. So right here is my line. Now I could put it and you, you, you would think, you would tend to think you would want to put that zipper to cover up that line, right? But you really want it slightly below because you're going to come in here and sew on that line. And it works better if your zipper is just slightly below. And I mean, just slightly below. It's not even worth like doing a measurement because it would be so tiny. So what I wanna do now that I generally know where my zipper is going to go, I want to take and measure. I'm gonna measure over here first. When I say measure, I mean figure out where I wanna cut it basically. So on this side, all I do that has the zipper stop on it already, see the little silver stop? I'm just gonna come in here with my old rotary cutter. And I'm just gonna cut that right off, get rid of that. That's gonna be my one edge. And it's gonna go right there, right there. Now, when I come over to this side, I need to pull my zipper pull into the middle because I don't want it anywhere near this edge because I'm now going to take and cut this one off right about right there. So just a little bit past the zipper pull. Get rid of that. Now, when I put all of this back to where I want it, everything is in a good spot. And I can re-zip my zipper a little bit, but still keep it away from this edge. If it bothers you not to have a zipper stop here now while you're working with this, then what you can do is take your zipper to your machine and just sew back and forth over this edge and this edge, and that thread will act as a temporary zipper stop for you instead of the original metal one that was there. And you can do that if that helps you. In fact, let's just go ahead and show you what that looks like over here. So I've got my, yeah, this kind of got messed up there. There we go. So I'm just going to take and put my zipper right here. And I'm just going to make sure everything is lined up nicely. I'm going to sew. Wait. Across. And well, you can't really see because my hand was there. I'm so sorry. And then I'm going to sew back across and back across this way. All right. And now you can see that I have kind of a temporary zipper stop there. So it's not going anywhere. Let me flip my camera around again. All righty. So I, I don't really feel like I need one on my other end, but you can do that on both ends. 
if you put a temporary zipper stop on this end, it does kind of hold that end piece together a little bit for you, which kind of makes sewing your zipper on a little bit easier. Okay. All righty. So this is where, let me just double check again that I didn't mess up any of my placements. No, I'm good, okay. So this is where my zipper is gonna go. I'm gonna unfold again. All right, so now to help me get this on, cause all I have to do now at this point is go and sew across the zipper here and sew across the zipper tape here. But the way to do that and make it easy is to use this kind of a, I think this is quarter inch that I have here, um, zipper tape. It's sticky on one side and it has a little piece of paper backing on the other side. And all you do is take in, and this is fine, it won't gum up your needles, things like that. I know we're always, as sewists, we're always concerned about that, but there, it's really not a problem. A lot of our modern day products are made to keep our, our machine needles from getting all gummed up the way they used to. Because in all honesty, we used to use things like rubber cement and kinds of things that would of course get our, our needles all nice and goopy. But modern products help us out with that a lot. And I'm just putting a line of it down each side of my zipper. Now, in all honesty, when I do this zipper on other things, I don't use this because I've done it so many times, I just don't find I have a need. But I wanted to show this because I know that there could be someone out there who's never placed a zipper before in their life or someone who has placed lots and hate it. So this is a little bit of a tool that'll help you out there. Now, once you have it down here, you still have the paper backing on there. You just kind of want to lift up an edge and get it to start peeling. Peel your backing paper right off. And you can see that the zipper tape is right there. And you want to do that on the other side. There are lots of different brands out there and I've used several of them. So I'm not gonna like recommend a brand because I think they all work pretty much the same. So now I'm gonna line up my zipper right where I want it, right below that line. Lay it down and give it a press. And now it is right where I want it and I can go and I can sew this. So I'm gonna start with this, the, because of the way this goes on, I don't even need to use a zipper foot, but if you feel more comfortable using a zipper foot, please do. You're gonna sew right down this side and come around and sew right down that side. So let's go over to the machine and do that now. Now I'm using a white thread because that's the color I have in here. So, but I, I think that's fine because there's white in the fabric as well. So I've got my foot here, I've got my needle ready and away I go. And because my foot is so wide, it really is holding on to that zipper without my having to use a zipper foot. Now you can see I'm right here at the zipper pull. I can at this point lift my foot up and take and just zip that back into place. Now I don't have to worry about it anymore. I put my foot back down and away I go. And at this point, I do not bother doing a back stitch on the end because I'm going to stitch over this again when we stitch it all together. Okay, doke. One side is done. Now I'm gonna flip it around. Actually, to keep my the least amount of fabric in my throat, I'm just gonna slide it over now and do the other side. I'm gonna pull my zipper pull down just a little bit to get started. And I'm gonna sew. 
And when I get to that zipper pull, I'm gonna stop and I'll lift up my zipper foot. Oh, hang on. This machine doesn't have an automatic down, so I'm gonna keep my needle down. I'm gonna lift this up and I'm gonna, sorry, I know you, you can't see this because my arm is there, but I have to, there. So I've pulled it around and put it back up here. Now I'm gonna lower my foot again and finish sewing it on. Now, when I normally place a zipper, I will actually sew closer to the zipper teeth. But with this scenario, um, you don't really need to. I just kind of go right down the center of that zipper tape. And I have used a lace zipper here, what I call a lace zipper. I know that you can order them on Amazon. I don't know um, if any fabric stores carry them. I think they are becoming more popular. Um, I know I've been using them for about four or five years now in my sewing and I love them. They're my zipper of choice for any kind of project like this, if I can get away with it. And um, however, um, if you can't find them, I know that you can order them from Amazon, of course, right? Um, just type in the word lace zipper and you will see all kinds of things like this. Okay, so now, our zipper is on, yay. That was as hard as it is gonna get for putting in a zipper, pretty simple, right? Let me flip the camera. Now I'm gonna show you how to open this, this up because look, there's no, whoops, there's no hole back here, right? So just open your zipper and get out the dreaded seam ripper. Start down here at this end with your zipper open and go between the teeth and poke your seam ripper in there and just give it a little bit of a push. Okay, just maybe an inch or so. That's all you need to do. Some people will open the whole zipper with the seam ripper. I, I don't because I find it easier to use my little snips. So now I'm gonna come in here and I am just going to cut right between the zipper teeth, the open zipper teeth, cut the fabric in the back. That's all I need to do to open up this zipper. Oh no, oh no. I've never had this happen ever. My zipper tab came off. I've never had this happen while I've done this. That's, oh, that's so bad of me. Okay, let's see if I can get this on. I'm gonna, I'll finish doing that in a second. Let's see if I can get this back on. I know it'll go back on. It's just, can I get it back on quickly and easily while doing this video? All righty. So I'm gonna put it in one side to start it. There's a little technique here. And I know it's gonna be hard for you to see it because it is, a, it's putting your zipper, I mean, I'm not gonna lie to you, putting your zipper pull back on is fiddly, it just is, but it, it can work. All right, so I've got that side. Whoops, I thought I had that side, there we go. Oh, honestly. Okay, I'm gonna take a little snip off of here. Take a little snip off of here. I just did that with my good scissors. Oh well. Now let's see if I can get it to. All right, I have it in on this side. Now I'm gonna see if I can get it in on this side. Cross your fingers. As I'm not taking this zipper off, I'm telling you. Oh, did I do it? Maybe. Come on. Oh, shoot, I didn't do it. All right, I'm gonna try it just one more time. And if not, I will move on and I will, I will play with that later. Honestly. And I told you not to put in a, a zipper stop on this end. 
because it wouldn't come off. And I've never had this happen. I jinxed myself, I think, didn't I? Okay, there we go. Okay, it's on this side. Let me back it up just a little bit. That's a little far. Now I have to get, it might be worth snipping out. Well, we're going to learn how to replace a zipper pull in this video too. And I wasn't intending to do that. I'm just undoing some of my zipper right here to make it a little easier to maneuver. So I'm gonna stick that in there. Good. I got a hold of you now pull. Come on, now pull. Oh. I've got them in there. Okay, it's in there and it's in there. So it should. <sighs> well, it should work, but why isn't it? All right, let's. There we go. Got it. Okay. Thanks for sticking with me. <laughs> so what I did here, folks, is I put this one edge in and then I, I just gave this a little trim and then fed a clean edge in there. So let me just re-sew that really quickly on this one side. Good grief. If you are interested in knowing how I did that, you know, how to put on a zipper pull, there are some really good videos to show you what I just did in a lot more detail. Um, that wasn't meant to be a part of the demonstration and I'm not sure that you could see it very well, but we got it back on there and it didn't take too horribly long. So now just to be on the safe side, <laughs> you know what I'm doing, right? I'm putting on a zipper a tab uh, stop over on this side. Okay because I don't want that coming off again. That would make me very sad, mad and smad. <laughs> okay, got it. Okay. So now I, I want to open my zipper slowly, not going past the zipper stop. Okay, and now I want to take my scissors and I want to finish opening my hole for my zipper. So there we go. Now I can zip it back. And I always leave it a little bit unzipped while I'm working on the rest of the project just because we still have to sew up the sides. Our zipper is in. Yay. Okay. I could have stopped the, the video and redone everything, but you might as well know that we all have times when things go wrong and you just fix them as you go. All right, so I have my peaks here lined up with those little lines and I'm gonna put back my two little clips to hold them in place because this particular one wants to roll on me a little bit. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and sew straight across this line for the bottom of the pockets. Flip that camera, there we go. So I'm, and I will do, a little back stitch here on this piece. And I'm just going straight across that line that we made with our ruler before. So this becomes the top of the big pocket and the bottom of the little sleeves for the USB sticks. And if you don't like your, your heat erasable pen being there, then you can always go back at the end and give it a little iron and um, get rid of that 
marking. Okay. Get rid of those. Bring that back to me and back to the first camera. I have to cycle my cameras. I'm not quite set up yet to just do to choose which camera I want with one button. I have the I have the equipment. We just are my husband and I are still learning it. So all right, so now um, we have our pocket right here. So now we're going to come in. I'm going to take my clips off because this isn't going anywhere now because it's and I'm going to start up here and I kind of use the edge of the trim on here for my seam, my side seam. So I start up here. I'm going to go do a little back stitch, come all the way down, do a little back stitch. Then I'm going to come over here, do the same thing. All right. So let's go back to the sewing machine. So I just I'm going to turn my let's turn my little iron off because I'm afraid it's going to melt something but because it's just not too far away from here. So go forward a little bit, go backwards a little bit. And now I'm just kind of using the binding on here as my guide. All the way to the bottom, go backwards. And go forwards. And that's one side sewn together, clip my threads. So one side is sewn together. Now I'm just going to get my thread under my foot there and I'm gonna start coming back down the other side. So this time I'm actually starting at the bottom. This is a little bit older machine I'm using, so it doesn't have as many of my little bells and whistles and stuff that my other machine has. I have to remember how to start and stop things. And that's a great little machine. It's just a little singer patchwork machine and it's I've made king size quilts on this little machine so actually quilted them on here it, it really has been a great little machine and I, it's just really easy to use because it fits up here for my videos all righty so we're going to flip the cameras again okay so now we have our sides sewn up and once again I now we have to put on our fabric tabs. And what I do is I, there's just enough space left here that I can stick this right here and sew it. But what I was supposed to do, getting that, getting that zipper pull off just set me off my game open up that side a little bit on each side. So you're gonna to wanna to put these in when you sew your sides down. There you go. So I'm just gonna set these in here. Right in that little space. I'm gonna take this over to the machine, front, back, front, across here. Sorry guys, that zipper pull just kind of flummoxed me there for a little bit. Alrighty. Now, because I have an edge here on my zipper that is raw, I'm actually going to set this right here for a zigzag. And I'm going to zigzag across here. And zigzag back. And then I'm going to set this back to my straight stitch and stitch across straight. 
Okay, and that's what I'm going to do on each side, and that helps kind of cover the raw edge on the zipper. You could put zipper tabs on the end of your zipper. I did that with the, the other one I made, and I'll be honest with you, although they look great, I hate making zipper tabs. It's I just hate it. And because, like I said, this is for a utilitarian, it's utilitarian, I don't mind that I have that little bit of edges there. I just, it doesn't bother me. If it bothers you, by all means, make yourself a little zipper tab on the ends of your zippers. Let me show you. See, I put one on the ends of here. And to be honest, for me, they were more trouble than they were worth getting them on there. Um, they look nice, very nice. Um, I just don't like to make them. So it's your own choice. All righty. All right, so now we're gonna put this ribbon in over here, just like I did before. I'm just gonna pop it in there, right where my zipper is. Come back over to my sewing machine. Set it on zigzag. Backwards on zigzag. Just so I'm catching a little bit of that zipper. And then I'm going to go back to my straight stitch and come back down one more time. Now our ties are attached as well. So if you want to, if you want to put, if you want to put these ties on with a zigzag, do the do it the way I did. Don't put them in when you're sewing up the sides. Reopen a little hole on each side, put them in there and come and do that zigzag. If you just want to sew straight across and you don't care what this looks like, or you're going to put a zipper tab there, just put them in when you're sewing up the sides. Okay. Try to get rid of all my little strings there. There we go. All righty. So now we have our big pocket open that we can put our little snips in and some more of our USB sticks. And I just try to make sure that nothing I put in here on this side is going to be longer than the middle so I can fold it all over. Now, if you don't wanna fold it over, if you want it to be, like this and just leave it like that, then you don't even have to put the ties on. You could just put the snaps on and leave it flat like that and it would be fine. That's another option for you. Okay. So now what we wanna do is we want to sew down our lines here. Now you could just eye it and guesstimate but I don't like to do that with these little pockets. I like to give myself a little bit of a line there with my heat erasable pen and it'll all come out at the end. And I like to mark them. That way I know exactly where it is that I wanna sew. I don't know, you might have really good eyesight. My eyesight at my age is no longer the best eyesight going. So I'm missing them. Oh, there it is. Okay. So it helps me to have a visual marker. Now on my other sewing machine, I actually have a laser pointer. Um, but on this little guy that I'm using today, I don't. So these marks help me. So now I'm just going to go sew down all my little marks do a little back stitch at the top so that they say, because that point is going to be the point where you're going to be pulling things in and out all of the time, okay? I'm going to keep my stuff ready here. 
Well, I would say this is probably the fiddliest part is sewing all these little lines. But we're seriously really close to being done. That one's done. And I'll snip all my threads and stuff at the end. I just want to get my pockets sewn. So if you uh, make one of these and you want to show um, what you've made, I'd love to see it. And you can post a picture at my Facebook book group so in common that's s-e-w-i-n-c-o-m-m-o-n -M -M -O -N. so in common um that is a little uh, facebook page for showing our projects they don't have to be my projects if you make projects other patterns and stuff you're welcome to show off your pictures there there's no selling on that page um, it's just a place for us to support one another and show off our work um, so if you um, if you want to make one and post a picture, I would certainly love to see it. That's so in common on Facebook. And my um, page that is the page where I show like my Zoom workshops and things like that. That is at Heartfelt Creative with Diana on Facebook. Heartfelt Creative with, and the with is the W and the backslash, and then my first name, Diana. I just came on, my needle just came on threaded. Let's try to get this back in here. This little machine does not have a auto threader. It's well, it technically it has one. See it right there? But it hasn't worked since about two weeks after I had this machine. Um, I don't know what the reasoning is, but for some reason, the these little threaders on the these little machines just did not hold up very well. And yes, I've tried doing everything. I've called them, we've worked on it together and mine is just, it just doesn't work. So I still have to do it like we always did it and thread it myself. My other machines have auto threaders and I love them because again, with my eyesight, it helps so much. eyesight was really good until I had cancer 13 years ago and um, I ended up having to get glasses while I was in the hospital that's how quickly my eyesight changed and it was because of the type of cancer I had and how it affected my hormones and things like that and so um, it was like the day after my surgery I woke up and I couldn't see anything. I mean, literally couldn't make out my husband's face. And when my doctor came in and he said, well, sometimes after the surgery, like in about a year or two, your eyesight, your, you know, your vision might change a little, but I've never had anyone vision change like while I was still doing the surgery, but yours has. So you might want to go get some reading glasses and then see an eye doctor when you're out of the hospital and you can get a prescription. So my husband went to Walgreens and got me some reading glasses, a couple of different strengths because we had no idea. And um, for about four years, no, it was longer than that. I think it was more like six years. My vision changed almost daily. 
So they wouldn't put me in prescription glasses. They just had me wearing readers because it was really my, um, it was really the reading and that sort of thing that was causing the real problems. But I ended up having eight different reading strength, reading glasses in different strengths um, in order to see. And I would have to carry them with me to the university where I was finishing my thesis and uh, teaching and stuff. And I had to have them with me because I never knew exactly what which one I would need from from hour to hour. It was crazy how my eyes kept changing. All right, so I am snipping all of my strings now because although I would I would snip the strings in front as I went along, I never snipped my bottom string. I just do that at the end. I go in and clip it all off at the end. It's just easier. Okay. So now our front's all nice and done. There's our pockets. So let's get a little there. That one goes in there nicely. That one goes in there nicely. That one goes, there we go. And I can fill all of those up. And when I wanna get them out, if I don't like doing this type of thing, I can just put my thumb right here and push. And out it comes, out it comes, out it comes. Okay. Now I'm gonna, you can see I, I told you I didn't snip my bobbin threads. So I just need to go in the back here and snip these. Keep kept me from having to take this out of this little machine every time and reline it up. Um, so I just find it easier to do it that way. All right, there, all my little strings are. Now, technically, we're done, except for doing our little corners here. So all I did on mine, wait, I gotta, String that wants to hold on. All I did on mine is I folded them both back so that they're, I mean, on this rounded corner, it just, it was easy. They just kind of fell right in the, the ditch and folded. Now I'm gonna take and I'm just gonna sew these down. You can, um, I'll show you on that other one that has a straight edge because you can actually do a little measure on those if you want to. There's one done. I'm, I'm not going to flip the camera over for these. I'll show you when I'm done here. So see, I just folded it down and I just followed that bit of binding that was already on here and stitched it down. Now I'm going to do that over here on the other side. And remember, folks, you're in charge of your sewing machine. It's not in charge of you. So stop and start if you need to. Um, and, you know, make it do what you want it to do, not vice versa. Okay. And then have some folks go, oh, my machine gets away from me. Just stop your sewing. Rearrange. Turn your speed down if you can. So now, look, there we go. Technically, I'm done. I could load this up now, fold it over, tie it, and I'm finished. If you want to add the poppers, I have one of these spring-loaded hole punches. I think this one is a, a Japanese-made one. It has, has three different size. Um, hole punches that screw in and get put in here. I use my tiniest one. And this is what I do. I fold my thing over. I flap over. I put my, my little board or whatever you punch through. And I make sure that I'm not going to be in this little piece that's folded over because it makes it too thick. So I make sure I come out here. So this is kind of easy for me on this one because of this pre-quilting. I can kind of use one of these intersection points. 
and I just take my little punch, punch a hole there, figure out where I want my other one. You can mark your holes and measure if you want, but truly, like I said, when I'm doing something this utilitarian, I just eyeball it, except for like measuring the flap and stuff like that. All right, so now you have a hole all the way through here and you have your holes here. Now you just take your poppers or your snaps. I'm gonna do the bottom ones first because the bottom ones are a little bit more fiddly um, to get on. There are different brands of these poppers. Some of them have the inner part, which is really rounded off and big like that. I really like those. In fact, I'm gonna use those. These white ones have a different type of, um, they almost look exactly the same. The part that goes into the bottom part, they almost look exactly the same. And um, I don't find that they snap very well. So I'm gonna use, some red ones in here. So that's one set over here. That's another set. Now I want a set for this side. So I've got my bottom part. Sometimes I stick together in my top part. There we go. So I've got all the pieces I need. You'll end up with eight pieces. You'll need four caps and two two what I call innies and two outies, okay? So I'm just gonna start, I always do my, my innies on the bottom. So what I'm gonna do here is take my cap, put it through the hole that's in the back and I can see the little piece coming up right through the hole. And then I set my other piece on top of it. And then you have to take your snap pliers. It's a contraption that looks like this. Now, like I said, with this piece on the bottom, it's a little more fiddly to get this in here because of there's not a lot of space in here. So you gotta kind of mess it about a bit. In fact, I'm gonna take these back off for a second and just really get this in here. There we go. Okay, now I'm gonna put my, I love these little snaps, but I will say these are fiddly too. These are, can be, I mean, these are fiddly because of where I'm putting them, but um, They're not as fiddly as doing those zipper pulls or zipper tabs. All right, so let's. What you need to do is get the cup that's on the back of it to go over the cap. I might have these in too far for this set. On, you're almost there, you're almost there. No, okay. So I'm gonna re, I end up having a couple little errant holes, but I put these in too far. They're just not going to, they're just not going to work with getting the snap on. So let's put it right about there. Okay, so right there. There we go. And this one will go right about there. You can only make things do what they're meant to do. Sometimes you have to adjust, right? Okay, joking. All right, there's my post through. Now I'm going to put on my top. Hold it on with one hand. Now I can get this in here. I 
There we go. Got it, give it a squeeze. All right, so it's all in here. Now I'm gonna take and give it a really good tight squeeze. And pull it out. And there, what it does is it bends the post inwards on itself. So it holds everything together and your little cap is your backstop on the other side. Now I'm gonna do that over here on this other side. There we go. And now I want my other inny piece right there, okay. Now I've got to, again, okay, I see I'm, I'm a lefty and so this gets really, I have to finagle this there. Oh, this one's going on really much easier. Except that it just, fell out on the there we go, Put right back there. All right, so everything is all nice and lined up. It is on that side, it is on that side. Let's get it right on there, there we go. All right, we're good and we squeeze. Okay, and that one's in there. So my two pieces are in here. Now I have to put in the two pieces on top. So when you're doing this, your cap goes in front here where you can see it. And the snap, the part of the other part of the snap goes on the inside this time. And this one will be much easier. See, so all you do is you put your, your cap in this little black dish that's on the back and little silicone pieces over the front and you give a squeeze. And there's your snap. And then it comes together and snaps just like that. And trust me when I tell you they're strong. Ooh, there we go. They will loosen up a little bit after you use them, but when you first put them in, they're really in there nice and tight. All right, so now we're just gonna do this other one. All right, everything's lined up. Now I press. And now my snap is in here. Now I snap there. I snap there. Now it's closed. Everything is nice and closed up. If I have my things in here, so I, I might have some USB sticks over here, all the way across, right in the middle, stuff over on this side. I just fold it in half. I wrap my ribbon around the back on this side and around the front on this side. Whoops. There, on this side and on this side. And then I don't make mine long enough to do a big bow because I just don't do bows well. So I just do a little slip knot right there. And there, the little um, embroidery toolkit is ready to go. The tool tidy is ready to go. Let me flip the cameras. There we go. So it's done. And you got to see, so this is kind of nice because you got to see me correct some foibles like when my zipper pull came off. So go ahead and do those little tack downs on the ends so that your zipper won't come off. Like I said, that's the first time that's ever happened and I deserved it because I told you, oh, it never happens. And sure enough, it did. So, you know, so now I have two of these and this one actually, I will probably give to a friend because it went together. Like literally I did this whole thing in less than an hour. This one I had the foibles with, but you know, you got to see me do it. So um, snaps are your choice if you don't want them. If you don't have snaps, but you do want a closure mechanism on that flap, uh, try a couple pieces of Velcro there. That'll work just fine and it won't cause any problems with your USB sticks or any of your other tools. But anyway, I hope you enjoy making these. Um, I find them helpful. And now I can take my 
uh, grab and go tote and I can in this one pocket that's here in the front, I can stick it right in there along with all of my other rulers and my books and my patterns and fabric and anything else I wanna put in it and I'm ready to go or I can store this away. And that's what's nice about these kind of organizational pieces, especially if you have a small space, then it allows you to stay organized in a nice way and not have everything, you know, all over the house. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comments or contact me at heartfeltcreativeinfo at gmail.com. Again, that's heartfeltcreativeinfo at gmail.com. Or you can private message me at Heartfelt Creative with, that's the W sign in the backslash Diana on Facebook, Heartfelt Creative with Diana on Facebook, or leave a comment here and I'll get back to you as soon as I see it. Um, I usually get back to my comments really quickly unless it's the middle of the night and I happen to be sleeping because sometimes they make me sleep. That's just the way that is. Um, and I can help you out. You can make these for as many people as you want, do with them as you like. Like I said, they're very simple. Um, again, there's a link in this um, description for the supply list. And um, also take a look at the grab and go tote um, video if you like, um, to, if you want to make that, if you haven't seen it. And um, hit subscribe. My videos usually aren't that, I don't usually have that kind of foibles, but sometimes you have them and I think it's good to see them to see that you know we all make those kinds of mistakes and we can fix them and go on. So I hope you enjoy making it. I hope it comes in handy for you and um, take care. And I hope to see you back here in the sewing room again really soon. Bye now. <laughs>